About six months ago, I had a goal to build the ultimate drag truck four-wheel drive rolling chassis. Now, I had a 1500 horsepower, 535 cubic inch Gen 7 big block Chevy that needed a home. So I said, what the heck, let's see if we can get a full-size four-wheel drive Silverado somewhere into the eights in the quarter mile, which is a lofty goal, but we've got the power to do it and we just need a chassis to help put the power to the ground. Now, this project has taken about six months because somewhere in the middle, I decided it would be a cool idea to move the family from Utah to Colorado and buy a shop. And that has taken up a lot of my time, admittedly, over the past couple of months. But last week, I had a little bit of time to finish up the rear end of this frame to get the anti-roll bar installed, the fuel tank back in and the axle underneath the truck. So now I have what I believe is the ultimate four wheel drive drag truck rolling chassis that basically, well, just needs a truck to put on top of it. Before we get started on today's action, I wanted to take a second and talk to you about the sponsor of this video, which is Solder Stick. Now, if you any sort of wiring on your car or truck or boat or inside your house or basically any sort of wiring that needs to join two wires together, you definitely need to check out Solder Stick. Now, one of my favorite products that they make is this kit right here, which is for uh, heat shrink butt connectors. There's 500 pieces in it, and they go from 10 gauge all the way up, or all the way down, I should say, to 26 gauge. And what makes these so special is basically, there's a little band of solder encased in some heat shrink tube. So basically, once you join your two wires together with the stripped ends, you apply a little bit of heat, and that solder is gonna flow in between the two wires, and it's gonna make the connection. And the heat shrink, of course, is gonna to make sure it's weatherproof. So one and done, no crimping required. Just put a little heat on there, whether it's from a lighter or from a campfire or a torch or a heat gun, whatever you have, if it's warm enough to melt that heat shrink in the solder, it's gonna make a connection and it's weather tight and it's gonna last for a very long time. Um, solder stick has a special going on right now. If you use the code LT20, you can save 20% off your order, whether that's the heat shrink butt connectors like this or their heat shrink ring terminals. I've got both of them here because as we do wiring, we use pretty much all the stuff. So check out solder stick and use the code LT20.
So I realize in this video I haven't done a whole lot of talking. I just kind of I had a good day on Friday to be able to get some work done. So that's what I have been doing. It's now Monday, um, which means two work days in a row. I've been able to work on my own stuff. So awesome news. Anyway, status update where we're at. We have the rear end of the frame back on the ground, back into full roller status. Um, I got all my sliders primed up and then we got the axle installed. Uh, remember, this is all temporary. These are old, just stock U-bolt plates. We're having Caltrax on here underneath when this is all said and done. Uh, we have the new, uh, excuse me, the new Atomic fabrication and performance upper shock mounts installed. Um, I think he said he redesigned these since you saw the last ones I did, but they still fit under the bed floor. Um, this is the basically the height of the bed floor here. Um, so they'll fit just a little bit underneath. Um, so we're gonna have the shocks on the outside and the anti-roll bar, which you just saw me working on, is gonna go kind of in the middle. So yeah, the next step, I guess, is to get the inner roll bar installed onto the frame. A little bit more welding to do on it. You saw me just a second ago TIG weld the arms onto the center piece of the bar, but I also went ahead and I drilled a couple of 3 8 holes, uh, three on each side, just to put a plug weld in to give this a little bit more strength. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because this outside edge will not be welded, mainly because the bearing or bushing, whatever you want to call it, um, needs to slide on there and provide like a thrust surface, if you will. So this way bar doesn't go side to side. So I did not want to weld that because then it would not have a nice flat, smooth surface for that to kind of work again. So anyway, to add strength, three holes on each side to plug weld. So we'll get that taken care of right now. And then we'll get the brackets mocked up and put it in the truck. Uh, oh, this was a Funkhauser, I think, Funkhauser race cars. Yeah, because the same place that I got the sliders from, pretty sure Funkhauser anti-roll bar and then atomic uh, shock mounts, Caltrax split monos and Caltrax underneath. So that's kind of the setup on the rear end. Oh, and of course the got torque differential, 14 bolt semi flutter. So a little more welding, we'll get the rear end of this truck put back together. So we got the rear anti roll bar 100% welded up. We got the plug welds in and I kind of smoothed everything out so it looks like they never were there. Uh, and then I went ahead and got the end links started. Um, these have a left hand thread on one hand and a right hand thread on the other. I'm not sure of my finished length yet, so I just kind of cut these long. 
um, one side fully welded. Then when we get this mocked up in the truck, we'll cut this to final length and weld in the other rod end. And of course we have the tabs to mount on the cross member and the tabs to mount on the axle. But we're gonna take a quick break from the anti-roll bar because we have the welder out. Um, there's a project that I need to take care of on the Lincoln, which may or may not lead to my demise. <laughs> we have a fuel tank that's cracked and we need to weld it. Nick's over here working on the wiring for the Sniper EFI. Hopefully we want to get this thing fired up a little bit later on this week, um, but of course we need fuel and the car hasn't run in like years. The fuel that's in the tank is old and varnished and nasty, so we want to flush everything out anyway, but um, the tank has a pretty big crack in it as you can possibly see there's a hairline crack right down that weld right there so of course it leaks um, makes a mess all over the shop it's aluminum this is a handmade tank um, rather crudely made if you look at that but before i go insulting somebody else's welds i got to see how i can actually do for that so anyway i think what the plan is because it's a fuel tank obviously fuel is explosive um, i'm probably going to fill it with water at first just to try to flush out any residual fuel or vapor or fumes, um, try to clean up that area as good as we possibly can because contaminated aluminum, as you know, can be a bit of a pain to weld. So we'll get that um, flushed out, cleaned up, um, and wish me luck because I think we're gonna need it on this one. Oh, pro tip, if you're gonna paint your fuel cell, don't use rubberized undercoating. It, like, it turns to goo as soon as fuel hits it, which you shouldn't, but just don't, just don't. Oh yeah, we got a front doorbell, so now I know when customers come in. Just talking to myself again. <laughs> All right, so I will freely admit this is probably a stupid idea and I do not like it and I'm a little bit nervous. Um, we filled the tank with water, we completely, well, we filled it with water, we flushed it out as good as we could. I took some compressed air and tried to, you know, blow it through a whole bunch to circulate any extra fumes out. Uh, took the torch and kind of preheated this area to try to burn off any contaminants that might be left in the aluminum, which the aluminum does look pretty clean for what it's worth. Um, so here goes nothing, I guess. Let's see if we can weld this up. We got her welded up. Thankfully, we didn't have any ill side effects. Uh, I got some AN caps on here. I'm just gonna fill the water, let it sit overnight. Um, this is the leaking area right down here, so we'll see if we get any drips, and also just to verify that nothing else on the tank leaks. So, fill her up. Guys, one more thing we are doing. Uh, front office here, we're kind of doing a bit of a renovation. As you can see, the desk that used to sit right here is gone, and we are replacing it with that. Thanks to Tommy. <laughs> so fill that space up, make it look better than the old pile of garbage that was there. All right, it's the next day. I was here until about 10 o'clock last night getting the front office kind of 
uh, back up to, well, we gotta get it so we can do business, right? Uh, but I wanna show you guys the new setup. You probably don't remember the old one. I wish I would've got some video to show you, but this is our new front desk. We got like a hardwood tabletop. This was actually left upstairs when we bought the place. So we probably could refinish it, but it's super duper solid. Uh, the old front desk, you could grab the top here and basically shimmy it all around. This is like, we got way, way overkill, just like everything that we do. Switch the monitors around so everything kind of matches. So that makes me happy, makes the front end look a lot better. Um, I still do want to um, take out this wood paneling. I don't necessarily love it. I just would prefer to have drywall back there. And then we want to match this sort of like uh, tin roof wainscoting kind of all the way around. Anyway, um, that's the shop update. We're, uh, we're cranking away, we're doing business. I did want to, oh, update on the fuel tank. We, we passed the leak test. I filled it all the way to the brim last night and it's been sitting on the floor. I'll kind of show you over here. Uh, not a single drop of water. And as you can see, it is 100% full. So other than what I just did there, that's the repair area, absolutely no leak. So uh, we'll get that cleaned out from all the water, get ready, get it ready to go back in the Lincoln, and then we will, oh, finally, uh, get the anti roll bar installed on the truck. So that's about point seven with the down arrow. You good? Yep, go ahead. Good? Yep, go ahead. Because there's a bed rib that sits there. Oh, that actually works out pretty perfect. Because this is the maximum height it can go. You can see the rod end will start to bind oh, right okay. there. Yeah, yeah. So I've got, you know, an inch of clearance, which is perfect. Oh, the other thing I needed to check is here. A little less room, but you can see a level is what, two inches, two and a half? Mm -hmm. That may get a little close as the suspension compresses, but I don't think the diff cover is ever going to hit. hit it. The only thing I don't have is room for exhaust, which I have no idea what we're going to do for exhaust on this truck anyway. But, yeah, you don't. Mm. but I have room for shocks. Cool. Yeah. This is Nick. You guys wanted a formal introduction. Nick, hey, everybody, everybody, Nick. This is me. These guys right here are the axle tabs. Um, just with the spacing we have, we gotta kinda trim them a little bit. So, that's what we do next. All right, so the very last thing we gotta do is weld the little tabs onto the axle, which look like this. Um, somewhere in there. And then I also need to set the length of the rod ends here. As you can see, I welded one on, this end is left blank. Um, they're quite a bit too long as they are, and right now the truck is basically at full extension. The axle cannot go any lower than this because the spring sliders are maxed out on the, on the droop side. So basically, um, this probably won't be the final length for this guy, but I wanna make sure that at full extension, the, uh, the line between the end link, or whatever you want to call this, the arm and the end link is not straight. We want to have at least an angle of something like that, because if it were straight, when the suspension recompresses, it could kind of go back the other way, which would basically render this useless and drive these arms into my fuel tank, which we do not want. So, um, I'll stop moving. I'll put this probably somewhere right in here, weld the tabs on, something like that. And then of course, once we have the full weight of the truck put together, the axle is going to be up here. That'll compress probably something up in there, but I do have enough space I should have allowed so this can go almost up to the bed. Anyway, uh, clean some paint off and get some welding done. All right, I'm going to shorten this 
probably not to the permanent final length, but just to kind of let the arm, the upper arm, be a little bit more centered in its travel to mock this thing up. So just cut a couple inches off, and we'll be back shortly. All right, so the center of the end link goes from here to there. So we need to find the center point of that. And I'm just kind of picking an arbitrary height, but that could go anywhere like from the top of the tube to the bottom. I'm just kind of putting it smack dab on the back and we'll match the other side. Now I did shorten these to kind of an arbitrary length, but whenever we get the truck fully complete, you know, the weight of the body on it, then we will make the final adjustments and weld the bottom. Because right now that's just kind of slipped into the tube. Now, even though it did take about six months to get this project, you know, completed, start to finish, it really wasn't all that much work. The big thing was the front suspension, but um, I am so, so happy that this rolling chassis is pretty much complete. Yeah, there's a few things to finish up. I'll kind of give you the grand tour of it right now. Uh, but if you're new to the channel, this is probably, you might not have seen this stuff before, but basically this is gonna go under a 99 to 02 body style Silverado. I have yet to buy the truck. Originally, this was gonna go underneath the ugly truck, but I decided to keep that one with a stock engine and keep that truck two wheel drive. And this one is getting the built engine and will be four wheel drive. So we'll have two drag trucks. The ugly truck will probably remain more streetable. This one will be more racy, but I still wanna have a lot of Creature covers. But anyway, um, starting at the very front, we did a custom coilover suspension. I did all the brackets and everything myself. Um, I did use a set of off the shelf control arms, but I heavily modified them to get them to fit the way that I wanted. Um, right now, the steering is all stock, but I do have some heim joints that I'm going to be putting in in place of the stock tie rods. Um, the engine, of course, you probably remember that 535 cubic inches, 8.8 uh, .8 liters or thereabouts. It'll be about 1500 horsepower, or that's the goal, you know. I'm hoping maybe 16 or 17 it'll hold up to, but somewhere in that ballpark, um, eight and a quarter GM independent front suspension, which, uh, or the uh, differential, that's quite a bit more bulletproof than people give it credit for. I have the uh, late model aluminum steering knuckles in there to save a little bit of weight. Um, same thing with the coilovers. The whole front suspension conversion saved me about 100 pounds. We got some Viking um warrior shocks i think the i can never remember if the crusaders 
No, maybe they're Crusaders. They're, they're the good ones, anyway. Um, we're going to have the same type of shock out back, except, of course, it won't be a coilover. It'll be just a smooth body shock. But anyway, rear suspension, Caltrack split monoleaf springs. We are going to have Caltrack traction bars on here. I just don't have those yet. Um, Funkhauser spring sliders instead of a shackle. Funkhauser anti-roll bar, which you guys just saw me install. And then, of course, atomic fabrication upper shock mounts. I have yet to buy the shocks and the lower shock mounts, but, um, and then DB rods, aluminum fuel cell. And you guys probably noticed how I modified the rear of the frame, replacing the rear cross member with a straight one and relocating the front cross member further forward because of the bigger tank. Because yeah, I do want to take this thing on like Rocky Mountain Race Week and events like that, drag and drives where I need a lot of fuel. Um, and I hate how people cut the rear cross member out to move the fuel tank to the back. So I really love how this turned out. Um, C-notch in the frame, a GOT torque differentials 14 bolt with uh, C-clip eliminator ends. Uh, it's got a Detroit True Track in there, 342 gears. And then, what? I guess that's pretty much the gist of it, guys. This uh, is an extended cab chassis, and it's a big truck, but we have big goals for it. So I'm now really, really pumped that it's pretty much done. Um, a few things that I have yet to do on it that'll make it officially done, and then we can paint it. Um, I talked about replacing this cross member again with just a straight one, a couple of drive shaft loops, probably front and rear, you know, safety type stuff. I need to finalize the length of the end links. Right now the bottom is just slipped into the rod end and it's not welded. So once I get the weight of the truck on here and the ride height set, I'll adjust that. Uh, need to buy some shocks, get the shock mounts onto the axle. And then of course, once we get the body, then we can work on the roll cage and stuff like that. But I'd say we're like 95% complete with this, this whole project. So that makes me happy. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. Apologies again for not being consistent with my upload schedule because, well, we have a shop. There's a lot going on here and it takes a lot of time. That's, I was thinking like, I'll have no problem getting one video knocked out a week while having time to run the shop. But of course, this kind of takes priority but I haven't forgot about the fun stuff, guys. I'm doing my best, spending a lot of hours here, but I am really pumped. Next time, we're gonna bring the ugly truck back in the shop here for the first time. It's been in the new shop in Colorado and the motor's coming out. Now, I'm really pumped about this because a lot of you wanted to see how far we could push the stock 8.1. We have gone as fast as 1092, I think at 125, but the last 300 feet of the track, was basically on the rev limiter. So there's a lot more left in it. So I have a different camshaft, valve springs, um, rocker arms, a few other odds and ends. I think we're gonna port the intake. Basically I'm pulling the engine out, resealing it, gonna paint up a few things underneath the hood. Outside of course is still gonna stay ugly, but that project will kick off in the very next video and we are shooting for a nine second pass. I don't know if it'll happen, but Bandamere is open for one year. Oh, by the way, that's another big bummer, guys. Our local racetrack, Bandamere, world-class facility. They announced they're closing at the end of the season, which is a major bummer. So I hope now that I live in Colorado to be able to go to at least, you know, a couple of events there. I want to get the ugly truck into a 10, uh, sorry, a nine. We've already done a 10, but that's what you have to look forward to this summer. Thank you guys for watching. Come back soon and have a good one.